The Children's Commissioner says bullying has reached epidemic proportions. Are schools doing enough? That's our talking point. Hello and welcome to Talking Point, the programme on Teachers TV dedicated to lively debate about the issues that matter to teachers. In this edition, we've brought together teachers, mentors and parents to talk about bullying. Last week was National Anti-Bullying Week. Recent reports of extreme cases of violent bullying have led to claims that the problem is running out of control. The Children's Commissioner says some schools are in denial about bullying. But is the problem getting worse? And what can schools do about it? Cheryl Lambertage has been investigating. Pictures of 12-year-old Shani Naylor, who needed 30 stitches to her face after being attacked in class, have pushed school bullying to the top of the national agenda. Her injuries and a number of other high-profile attacks have brought widespread horror and condemnation, and the perception that bullying is on the increase. Indeed, a Teachers TV survey shows 44% of secondary teachers believe it's got worse over the past five years. But already I've been all over the country listening to boys and girls and to young people to hear what concerns them. And of course, top of the list is the word bullying. The Children's Commissioner, in post for four months, has claimed every child is affected by what he calls an epidemic of bullying. He believes some schools are in denial about bullying. He sees it as a priority for action. My strap line is, bullying is everybody's business. So that's the first point. Uh, the second point is for people, adults in particular, to understand the awfulness of some children's lives, which can lead in extreme cases to severe mental illness, even suicide. So it is a very important issue. And I think the third point is to make sure we all understand how to confront it. 14-year-old Kane Dixon feels his school failed dismally to confront the bullies who made his life so miserable that he became agoraphobic. He hasn't been back to school for two years and has tuition at home. It began at the end of year seven. Before the summer holiday, I was calling names, but after the summer holiday, like when it was near year eight, I started getting like hit for no reason, and just people started proper hating me, and it was just terrible. The only time I noticed something was the matter was when he, he would go to leave the house in the morning and I would be shouting at him, obviously, because I had other kids to get to school. But he was like, he was sobbing, like proper, really upset. And I used to say, come on. And he'd say, I just can't, Mum. I couldn't um, go out the door. I'd, I'd start, like, break down, crying. Like, um, and... Um, I got to a stage as well where I couldn't swallow no food. Two years on, Kane's able to leave the house and, with the help of a home support charity, enjoys photography and attends boxing classes. However, he still takes medication and feels he'll never be able to return to the school that he believes failed him. Can you remember what the bullying policy was at the school? I mean, did you have a booklet or anything about it? No, never. Never, never a booklet or nothing. Did you have assemblies on it? No, nothing. And your form tutor never said anything? My form tutor never never spoke to me about bullying. Never spoke... That, uh, no, none of the teachers there spoke to anyone about bullying. It was just, like, when I was in Year 7 and 8, it was just a thing, you know what I mean? No-one from Kane's old school wanted to discuss his case, but in a statement, the school said its anti-bullying policy was applied rigorously and incidents were always taken seriously. Every school must, by law, have an anti-bullying policy. But according to the Teachers TV survey, 31% of secondary teachers felt theirs wasn't implemented well enough. My mum gave me that. Schools have various options at their disposal for dealing with bullying pupils. Internal discipline, like detention, may be applied. The pupil may be excluded. And in the case of assault, the police may be called in. One technique for dealing with bullies is called the no-blame approach. This is based on the idea of restorative justice, in which the bullies are made to confront what they've done, but without blame and without punishment. As you probably are aware, we have a serious concern with Christopher in your class. At the Skinner's School in Tunbridge Wells, Kent, teachers tackle bullying in a number of ways. The no-blame approach is one. 
In Chris's case, and with his agreement, a carefully selected group of his friends were brought together with the bullies. They discussed bullying generally and thought about how they could help Chris. But I found this way a lot better because they didn't get into trouble and it was just disgusting and it was an intelligent way to do it and like that, I thought that was the best way. And how's it been since? Oh, it's been fantastic. Well, I, I haven't had any trouble at all and I'm really glad that nobody got into trouble and now I do talk to them and it's all fine. But the no-blame approach has proved highly controversial, not least with parents who feel it's a bully's charter, allowing them to return to their old ways as soon as the teacher's back's turned. Isn't what you're advocating appeasement? No, it's absolutely not appeasement. And, the, and I think that one criticism that really distresses us um, is that it's a soft approach. This restorative justice is um, what used worldwide and very supported by uh, criminal justice systems. Um, it is the tough way to help young people to face up to the consequences of their behaviour and to behave in a pro-social way. And I've known some very tough bullies who said it changed me inside. The government's approach is uncompromising, as Tony Blair set out in Prime Minister's Question Time. Bullying should be punished. Children who bully must be made to understand the harm that they have been doing. There are new sanctions that are now available, and I'm pleased that we are going to be giving in the school's white paper an unambiguous right to discipline to teachers. It is absolutely necessary, and I pay tribute to the work that my honourable friend has done on this serious issue. And those sanctions include parents of bullies finding themselves in court facing a £1,000 fine. The white paper also proposes strengthening teachers' authority, giving them a legal right to discipline pupils. We'll be completely explicit about the legal right for teachers to discipline pupils within school. That'll send a strong message uh, both to them and to their parents and I think help to reinforce the action that's already been taken in very many schools to stamp out bullying. Even with the new powers, the decision about when to step in to halt bullying will still be in the hands of individual schools and individual teachers. Yasmin Allen, your child was bullied. Can you tell us what the teachers in the school did? Well, initially, I don't think they actually believed that she was being bullied. There's, there's always an excuse, and it persistently went on for, uh, solidly, I would say, for at least two years of her first in the year two, then year three and three and four. And it wasn't until I constantly went in and pointed out certain details and the fact that I had spoken to other mothers um, that finally they addressed the situation and she was put in a class at the end in, in the new term with away from all the children that were causing this particular problem. And did life get better for her? Yes, yes, it's a lot better for her. She's not fearful of going to school anymore. I mean, I had terrible occasions when she was petrified and of one particular child who was a boy, and the school resolutely refused to do anything, and that comes down from the head teacher. And do you think her case is typical? Yes, I, I think that's yes. Her I mean, case given that you is typical. talked to other parents. Yes, I talked to other parents, and I was told by the other mothers that they had been in to see the head teacher. One parent actually wanted to take it to the board of governors. The head teacher said, "No, we'll deal with it, in, you know, on our level." And her way of dealing with it was what passing it along. She's very fond of passing it to the class teacher. I don't think everything should be the responsibility of the class teacher. That's one particular case. I mean, if you were asked to, in general how you think teachers and schools respond to bullying these days, what would you say? I, I would say that they're actually scared of dealing with the situation. Well, I think they've become more, they've escalated to such an extent that maybe they haven't got all the resources in the school to deal with the particular aspects of bullying. Uh, Bernadette Deller, you're an assistant head teacher. How, how, how would you respond to the same question? No, I, I would say, I would take umbrage at the fact that you're saying that teachers aren't doing enough. I mean, the video that we had at the beginning of, of um, Alice Green and Jackie Smith was actually at a, a showcase event in Westminster last Monday, which I was also at. 
Um, That's the Anti-Bullying Alliance The Anti-Bullying Alliance. And they also, you saw Jackie Smith going around and looking at one of the stalls on that, on that clip. Um, in fact, the whole room was full of stalls that were brought along by children from schools all over the country um, showing what they were doing. Um, in the primary school instance, I mean, I'm from the secondary sector, but in the primary school instance, I was so impressed. There were, there were groups of children showing how they have playtime games and involving, involving people who feel left out, involving those, making sure everyone's got something to do. There was another group doing friendship bracelets it was called fab I can't remember what friends are I can't remember what the, the the B stood for there were so many things going on the whole room full of it and I went to another one by the anti-bullying alliance on Wednesday in New, in Newmarket and again the same sort of thing and Bernadette do you think that teachers do listen to parents like Yasmin yes I do I mean in my experience there isn't one school that I know of that isn't doing something to address bullying and takes the issue really seriously but they weren't listening they weren't listening to me it wasn't until I actually um, I had to, to say look this is what's being said. I actually went to the deputy head. Why do I have to explain to my seven-year-old child what, what the meaning of a slag means because she's been called that in the playground? Mm -hmm. Why should I have to be put in this position? Why in a Christian school that is supposed to have an ethos, why, are they, why, is, why is this allowed to perpetuate in the playground and then in the class where her whole self-esteem was brought down by this particular group of children? I'm not gonna, and I'm not going to mm. condone that in any way, shape or form. I think what you're describing is outrageous. I do have a similar experience with my own daughter actually in year one um, and she was like the boy on the video being sick before she went to school crying being very upset but she wouldn't tell me what it was all my instincts were that there was something wrong phoned the school they phoned me back by lunchtime and said we know what it is she was in a class of 30 25 of them were girls which is unusual the girls had made a club her best friend was in charge of the club and one rule applied you couldn't wear glasses and she was the only girl in the class with glasses. Let's hear another perspective on this. Lawrence Archibald, um, you're a learning mentor at a pupil referral unit. From your perspective, are schools doing enough to tackle this issue? Um, I don't necessarily believe so. Um, what I mean by that is depends on what certain schools class as bullying. Um, I agree with Yasmin where um, some schools may feel that it, well, some schools aren't doing enough to help parents. Um, well, it is some kids where I work may be, may be bullied. What happens is a school might see um, a child being bullied. Now, they might not class that as being bullied because kids will be kids, they'll muck about and fight and this and the other. And a child will go home with a bruise on his face. A parent might ask, What's happened? Um, you know, and sometimes a child will say, Well, I'm just mucking about and I was, I was punched and whatnot, whatnot. And um, certain parents will come to the school and say, Well, my child's been hit. I want something done about it. Now, the school being the school will say, well, listen, we were there, we saw an incident happen, and um, your child was actually in an altercation with another child, and this is what happened. But the, sh the parent is actually trying to pursue the issue. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, in that case, parents will there, therefore, you know, obviously be on the side of their own child. But as a school itself, they might feel that this is not a class of bullying. Exactly. You know, it's just how, how certain schools perceive what bullying is, and I think that we have to kind of analyse what we... Mm. my class is bullying because wh where I am we actually have a lot of kids who are in our working referral unit and we actually have a lot of kids who are in the referral unit for bullying and um, I think it's down to us to kind of analyze and find out why these kids are bullying you know for one because you know a lot of these kids where are coming from a lot of um, how can I say hard areas where it's a dog eat dog world and they have to actually come with a hard attitude and, you know, a very aggressive attitude. Well, we'll come on to that. I just want to pick up something that when the, the tone of what you're saying suggests that some schools don't actually recognise bullying for what it is. That's Terry Chryson, yeah. um, you're a head teacher of a secondary school in Essex. Would, would you share Lawrence's uh, perceptions? I think that's probably true that there are many schools that don't identify the, the, the definition of what is bullying and uh, many parents who think that any incident involving a, a child being called a name or uh, an act of violence, uh, a one-on-one -on -one violence, is suddenly bullying. Let's, let's be absolutely clear what we're talking about. Bullying is the repetitive act of one person abusing their power on other people. Definitely. It is not an isolated incident and we need to get this Definitely, in perspective yeah. because there are, there are things like anti-bullying weeks that all they do is raise the status of bullying so that every single incident, you can't even have an argument mm. in a school Definitely. without it suddenly being a bullying yeah, issue. So agree. let's get it in perspective. I mean, I do also think that uh, 
Um, Yasmin's expectation of the head teacher in dealing with everything is unreasonable because that's why we have classroom teachers and that's why we have tutors in schools so, and heads of house or heads of year so that other people who are closer to the understanding of the needs of children can be there. But I'm never ever going to say in, in any, on any platform that there are schools that are in denial because there are schools that are in denial about issues of bullying and they need to be t called to task because there is no school in the country that doesn't have an issue with bullying. And from your perspective, uh, Terry, do you think some schools, some teachers are, are fearful of parents? I think some parents can be bullies themselves and I think we have to be wary of the fact that often a child who is a bully, they learn most of that at an early yeah. stage at home and their yeah. parents can be bullies. Yeah, so yes, they will be fearful just of that. Just want to give an example, I agree with that as well. Um, you know, given an example, we've had a parent literally come in and said, my child's been hit. I want this done, or I'm going to do this to the child myself. I'm going to take this to the court. I'm going to do this and do that. And it's a, this, that's a constant attitude that they keep bringing every time the child gets into an altercation. And um, you know, sometimes you know the school might be fearful of these sort of repercussions or the parent coming in. And um, I, I do feel that obviously the learning process starts from the parent as well. Um, uh, we, we saw the children's commissioner on, on that film at the start of the program saying um, it's it, it's an epidemic. W would you would you agree with that? Would any of you agree? I wouldn't with say it? an epidemic. Would you say um, it's worse than it was? It, it's, it's, I believe it's got worse. Though. I, I do believe really that. that. I don't think it's got any worse than it was in 1944 when we had the state school systems well, expanded. Well, I, think I think what's highlighted happened more. is that yeah, mm -hmm. we've raised the game. We've made yeah. it much more public about bullying. We've made sure that parents know. We made sure that children know. In our, in our school, we have the ABC, an anti-bullying culture, which means that actions bring consequences. We don't go uh, regularly down the restorative justice, uh, softly, softly approach that the, the anti-bullying alliance, uh, but we have used that when it's necessary, but, and we do take action. On on children who are bullies because sometimes they need to know this is unacceptable in an organized society and they are no longer members of our organization well, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will agree with Terry I, I do like I said bullying's always been there but you know at the present moment obviously it's been highlighted more um, and it's obviously the most extreme incidents bullying goes on every single day mm -hmm. but obviously they, they've highlighted the incidents with, you know where a child's been cut cut in the face or you know a child's committed suicide so these obviously these events stand out more and um, obviously, they are, you know, from what I can see, they've been putting these sort of incidents in the newspaper quite a lot recently. Yes, so, and from a sorry, parent's no, perspective, I mean, how should bullying be tackled? I believe the bullies, the pe the, well, the, the child that's being bullied should be, should be articulating how it's affecting that, that, the, the child has, himself, herself. The bullies should be brought in and should be, and should be reprimanded, castigated. Yes, they should be, actually, because they are doing something that is not that is affecting another person's emotions. Not only another person's, it has knock-on effect. It's affecting the parent. Invariably, ultimately, the mother is going to have to carry the can in all cases, whether the child's a bully or whether the child's being bullied. There we don't have we don't have corporal punishment anymore. So, no. so when uh, when the prime minister says bullies should be punished, what do you think he means? Well, they should have privileges withdrawn. And the parents of the bully should be brought in. In fact, the, the child that's being bullied, the parents, uh, if the child that has been bullied, is, the parent is going into school and saying, I want action, I need something done, my child's too frightened to come to school. For whatever reason, physical or mental, there should be a forum of discussion, yes. Yeah. Everything should be discussed around the table. And the parent should also be uh, held responsible. Oh, Bernadette, that's... do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, we, I, I don't take the, the view that the... Um... The no blame approach, we call it the shared group approach, is a softly, softly measure. Well, that we saw one. someone from the ABA calling it tough in that film. Yeah. I think it is tough because it does make people face up to what they've done. And much earlier down the road, I would hope, than, than your daughter got to. Because right or at the beginning of these sorts of incidents, when, when they start to arise, you find quite often, I think it's as high as 20% of cases, it's actually friends falling out. Um, and the whole thing about um, the shared group approach is it revolves around feelings and how the person who's suffering is feeling and then it, you share those feelings with everybody in that group and you saw on the video um, it was it was the bullies as well as friends of and does and it work bystanders. yes do you think it works well, Terry? Well, justice works yes. uh, to a great extent yes, it doesn't right. work in every single case but in most cases it can work but it doesn't mean to say you don't have to have sanctions if you have a restorative oh. justice and you get people around the table there's a, and there's no blame culture and therefore there's no punishment that goes with that I don't think that's fair and no, that, how can no you be blame well, at the end of that, they all have to take on board an action that they have agreed to carry out. And so they're not walking away from that and that's it all over. 
and it doesn't end there they have to come back and we have review meetings and we talk about how that person is feeling now whether the actions have been carried out I'll it's a that, process yeah. that goes through many weeks sometimes months but picking yeah. up something that Lawrence mentioned quite a while ago well you didn't phrase it like this but is it possible to, to, to be tough on the causes of bullying well like I said before I think we really need to analyze you know what bullying is and like I said where I work in a referral unit where we actually have bullies um, kids who have been kicked out of mainstream school for bullying I feel we sometimes we need to sit down and talk with these kids and find out why mm. they actually bullying and um, do you like do I said, that? yeah well we do do that and can I just give an example you know we you know a child that I spoke to who um, was, was was bullying someone and you know when we sat down and spoke with this child and found out why this child was bullying he actually kind of broke down and said well he was bullied um, mm -hmm. You know, he, things for him at, at home aren't nice at all, and he's venting the frustration out in this way. Now, and is that kind of thing a school's job or is it a parent's job? It's both. It's, it's both. both yeah, I believe. Yeah. Conjunction. It's both. But I, I, I really believe you have to kind of understand um, why some of these kids are doing these sort of things. And you know, in, in regards to bullying, you know, we've got a child. We've had an incident where a child was literally running around the school, you know, making comments to every child, you know, rude comments to every child. And at one time, he was actually grabbed and, and, and beaten basically um, because he was constantly running around attacking and now this child that was beaten his parent came in and literally said you know my child's been attacked my child's been bullied this that and the other and not understanding the full story you know and I really feel that we have to sometimes get these mediators and these these um, sort of you know get the parents together and find out why these things are happening rather than saying this child is doing this and you should be kicked out and mm. Terry, does your, does your ABC approach deal with that? It that does, way? it yeah. does deal with that and, and the trouble is that it uh, takes a long time and a lot of investment of time and effort and I, I just want to come back on a, a really important issue about uh, how you deal with parents who are in denial about their child who is, who is a bully happen, yeah. and persuading them, that's a major hur yeah. hurdle and, and there ought to be, this is the issue from the school, this is what we're saying and it should be taken as read and there should be yeah. no comeback from the parents. That would be lovely to have that and that's what Tony Blair is mm. talking about when he says that we want teachers to have that privilege but also we have to recognize that it's not just the victim that needs support the victim needs a tremendous amount of support in terms of developing their assertiveness and making sure they're they're protected from the bullies but actually the bully also needs support yeah, now this is very hard to explain yeah. to a parent of a child yeah. who is being bullied that, yeah. that to explain that we also have to sort out the needs of that particular child the bully and provide support and help definitely. for them I agree with Terry there yeah yes, definitely sir? Well, I would say I'm all for mediation and the whole due process. There's all very well, it's all very well introducing radical procedures and methods, but at the end of the day, you've got to have a, a whole forum, like we're having a discussion where everything is laid on the table. If at the end of that due process, you're not getting any success, then yes, Tony Blair can go and find, find the parents. However, what do you do in the instances where the parents may be in prison? Or the parent has, like, total denial it's not my problem it's society's problem so do you think the white paper recommendations which are picking up on the steer report requiring parents to take responsibility for excluded parents potentially fining uh, parents don't you think those will work no I don't think that works unless you have had due mediation and process Definitely. where everyone is allowed whenever you have a cabinet or any kind of board meeting everybody is sitting there you have a chair and you have to say your bit. There's got to be some kind of process where you mm. compromise, you listen, and then you can put in your ABC measures and, and say, well, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And then if that really, really doesn't happen, then you do have to have another, another yeah. way of going about it. Bernadette. There's another point I'd like to make, is we're all talking about when bullying instances happen and how they should be dealt with and the various ways of doing it. We also need to be looking at sort of the ethos that we're creating in schools, the preventative measures mm. that, that are going into place, and making sure that we, well, as far as I'm concerned, that what. The, the, what you need to do is make sure you've got a, a society and ethos in your school based on respect and that you work with all of the students with regard to issues of empathy and, and making sure they understand how other people feel, the ability to stand in other people's shoes. But do you think that, the, you talked about the ethos of schools, do you think schools are taking bullying um, as seriously as they're taking exam results? I mean, I mean, is there not a, a classroom health set of league tables that, that could be drawn up rather than a, a exam well, as results? In, as in everything else though, there's balance, isn't there? I would say you're not going to get a school high up in league tables or with good results if you've got unhappy children. What do you um, think? So if you haven't got the pastoral side right. Yeah. I think that the Ever Child Matters agenda is mm. going to hit schools very hard if they don't do issues yes. in terms of looking after the welfare and the happiness of children. And you know, you can have happy children who don't achieve good results. You have yes. to get that balance oh, yes. right. You can you can still have very unhappy children 
who do achieve good results and you can have very unhappy schools where there are there's bullying from, from leadership downwards where they get good results so we do, do need to get that in balance but that of course raises the question at what point uh, does school's responsibility end? I mean, are schools responsible for everything, for, well, for the we emotional health been, of children? We've always well been blamed for any ill in society. The, the, the issue is we need a society that has a greater level of respect right the way across the board, and, and schools are just a reflection of the local society. That's so the only word that the Prime Minister place. used when he got back into government. That's about the first word he used. I well, we do need that, and we've just done a whole series of... We didn't do uh, anti-bullying assemblies last week. We did assemblies based on, on the, the, the word of respect, because yeah. it is about if you respect other people, you will not bully them and it's better to, to solve it before it becomes a major issue and one of the extreme cases. And can that be achieved using Lawrence? I do. Um, like I said, you know, my, my, I work in a PRU where we have those bullies there and I just really feel that we need to kind of sit down with these bullies, analyse what is going on in their head and why and I really believe that we need to sit down with the victims and just kind of understand their feelings as well. Uh, these sort of anti-bullying seminars, you know, these people people coming in, maybe sometimes getting people who were bullies to maybe um, act as mentors towards these victims. Or and that works. As, it does work, yeah, definitely. Um, because like I said, you know, when we actually pull some of these bullies aside and speak to them on a one-to-one, -one, some of them actually break down and actually don't know why they're bullying or when they do explain why they're bullying, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an issue that needs to be addressed from them, you know, because they're going through a hard time themselves. I'm not condoning bullying at all, by all means, I'm not condoning it, but you know, there really is a, a deeper a process that needs to be implemented that I feel, you know, you need to understand what is really going on with the at, boys. At the and beginning of this programme, Bernadette, we, we heard uh, Al Aisling Green saying bullying is everybody's business. Would you agree? Yes, it is everybody's mm. business. Um, I agree with, with Mr. Chrysler said, mm. you know, it, we reflect society. Mm. And what's happening in society is what's happening in schools. Mm. But you need to make it everybody's business in school. Now, in our school, it's not just the job of the teacher. No. It's the job of the peer mentors, it's the, mm. the, the other students. It's the yeah. job of every single employee of the school yes. to take issues with and make yeah. sure that somebody deals with any report of bullying. Mm. Yasmin, are you reassured by what you've heard? Not really. <laughs> because it's, well, yes, no, that's unfair. That's unfair to say that. What I do say, what Terry said, though, that it's unrealistic of me to expect, you know, this from my head teacher. At the end of the day, if you have a, a strong leadership that is going to, not die, that's going to go right across the board with the teaching staff. Yeah, right. If you have a weak leadership, it's, it's diluted, diluted, diluted. It becomes ineffective. And if we are to not abrogate responsibilities, whether we're a teacher, mediator, support worker, mentor, mother, father, we all have our responsisibilities and I think this is where the total imbalance is, isn't it? not just in schools but in society. Not every school is the same either, but we do have an imbalance in society today where there's more stigma attached to help, I've got a problem, I'm a mother, I have a problem, I don't know how to deal with this. Or, uh, but there's no stigma yeah. attached to, in, to, in, to in watching revelling in soap operas and, in, in and having a parent in, in regards prison. to parents being fined and this, that and the other, mm. I don't totally agree with that because, you know, a lot of parents don't actually know or believe that kids are being bullied or are actually bullying. You know, we, we will call a parent in and they will literally refuse to acknowledge their child is a bully. Refuse. Do you think they're getting better or worse at the moment? Definitely worse. worse. Definitely worse. There are more worse. parents who are making complaints against worse. the school mm. than are helping solve And thank you all for addressing it because that's how we have to end this talking point for the moment. My thanks to all our guests for joining the debate. We're back in January with more debate on a talking point that matters to teachers. It might be this one. Till then, goodbye.